how prepared are we for a volcanic eruption? Researchers say there's a 30 to 50 per cent chance of Mount Taranaki erupting in the next 50 years. New findings show the physical, social and economic tolls would be monumental. Well, presumably they would if a volcano erupts. Shane Cronin is an Auckland University Professor of Volcanology with me this morning. Shane, good morning. Um, I'm having trouble hearing you at the moment. Could you say good morning again to me, Shane? I can't seem to be hearing. Ah, there you go. Shane, hello. Yep. G'day. Hello. Hello, how are hello. we? Hello, how are you doing? See, the, the <laughs> communication would be the least of our worries in a volcano, looking at your report, jeepers. Well, communication is often a big, big problem in, um, in volcanic crises. You, you might have seen the recent news around the Fakari uh, uh, story. And I think um, that kind of segues a little bit into, um, into Taranaki, the communication of the risk. So we've known about the risk for a quite a long mm. time. Um, but what we've been really doing over the last five years is we've been trying to take our geological risk information and put it into practice and in saying, OK, well, we know this might happen. What could we do to uh, protect ourselves? And particularly, what could we do to protect our infrastructure? What could we do to um, prepare uh, our infrastructure to avoid economic loss? What things have you come up with? Strengthening, you know, motor uh, roads, strengthening bridges, that kind of thing? Well, yeah, it's not so much just about strengthening things. It's about sort of figuring out where things are most likely to be affected and figuring out if there are alternatives. So, for example, electricity, if there is one entry point for electricity into the Taranaki region, uh, is there a possibility to do things in a different way? So it's more about working smarter rather than kind of strengthening everything and also clearing up some misapprehensions about what a volcanic eruption is. So it's not just complete destruction. It's destruction in particular places over particular time scales and just how we might take that information and then engineer some solutions that are not all that complicated, maybe just involving moving staff, moving people and being ready for a particular scenario to be able to switch over. All of this based on a prediction that in the next 50 years there's a 30 to 50 per cent chance. I mean, how how much can you really put on these predictions? You know, how how, rel how useful is that? A 30 per cent chance of a volcano in the next 50 years? Do we move people's offices? Do we move their houses? Um, well, that's the other thing we've been trying to sort of get into is that whilst we can make the predictions even more and more reliable, the key thing is it's not just a matter of, you know, if it's 30% or it's 50%, it's the inevitability that something will happen. And so it's more a case of what is it that will happen and how can we prepare for that without having to move people's houses and offices? You know, so if we are able to see this is kind of the type of thing that would happen, this is how uh, we have seen kinds of eruptions like this play out in other parts of the world. And so, obviously, if there is going to be a, an eruption, there will be disruption. And one of the things we've learned is that disruption may last for years, perhaps even decades. And so the key thing for us is to figure out, OK, where will that destruction be? How can we best deal with that, rather than sort of, let's right. say, wholesale moving around things?